it's a tumor of the salivary glands. So we continue with gastrointestinal system now and starting with the idea of the oral cavity. Next to it, there are three major structures of salivary gland. Those are sublingual gland, submandibular gland, and the parotid gland, which are huge salivary glands and very few minor salivary glands, which are with a haphazard position here and there around the oral cavity. Uh, what we should observe here first to prove that it's a salivary gland tumor, it's normal salivary gland parenchyma, which is at the periphery of the tumor. So take a look at it here now. It's scattered in between the fat cells, and you can see the tubules here, the ducts of the salivary glands, and also the productive glands, which are actually excreting their excretion and are leading it to the tubules, which are leading it out of the gland, and it's entering the oral cavity. As far as you can see here, there are nests of normal glandular structures. Some artificial hemorrhages here due to the removal of the tumor, nothing specific. Some also fibrous tissue and soft tissue, which is mixed with the parotid gland parenchyma. And then there is a fibrous capsule, which is a very thick one, and is demarcating a tumor growth here. Now take a look at the tumor itself. It's engaging most of the slide, as you can take a look at it here. Also here at the periphery, there is some normal parenchyma of parotid gland, again, next to a fibrous capsule. Some soft tissues here, artificial hemorrhages. We discussed this well. Now take a look at the pleomorphic tumor, which you're observing. Why am I calling it pleomorphic? Because it's having a couple of components which are taking part in it together. We can observe that the stromal component here is a very well marked, along with the cellular component, made of clusters of myoepithelial and epithelial cells. We call this tumor pleomorphic, and its previous name was tumor mixtus glandular parotis, because it's actually with a mixture of different components, and we can expect from the stromal component to be different in each type of tumor. It could be a cartilage tissue. It could be also at looking like a hyaline cartilage. It could be compound fibrous tissue. It could be also osseous tissue with some very severe calcification. It could suffer some variations in type and morphological structure. And myoepithelial and epithelial nests of cells could also form cystic cavities sometimes filled with fluid. Here, we don't observe such fluid, but this variation in structure could be happening in this tumor. Maybe here at some points. I know that's part of the cartilage is just darker. Maybe here. There you go. Here, there are some formations of cystically dilated spaces filled with fluid. Sometimes we can also observe in this tumor these structures. What is specific for this type of tumor that it's strictly a benign one. Um, it could have a very thick capsule, as far as you can see here. It's well demarcated. It could give satellites in the neighbor structures, which are exactly looking like the primary place of the tumor. And it's known to be actually the only one benign tumor which is considered to give metastasis, metastasis to surrounding soft tissues, but it's still considered benign. Those metastases are actually a little bit more distant satellites, which we can observe in the surrounding soft tissues. And when it's surgically removed, it should be with a large resection line next to the capsule along with the satellites because it could rise again if the surgeon leaves parts of the tumor and parts of the capsule in the parotid gland. It could reach some significant size 
and it could give rise to malignancy. We call this type of tumor the malignant equivalent of pleomorphic adenoma, carcinoma, ex pleomorphic adenoma, which strictly will have cellular ATP, which would be marked inside in the cells of the tumor. Now, we vaguely see such. And since the tumor is very well demarcated, we consider it benign. What you will be asked here eventually would be other types of tumors that you can see inside in the parotid gland. Do you remember these? Can you suggest some? Did you hear the question? <laughs> Can you think of other benign and malignant processes inside in the salivary glands as a structure, not needed to be only in the parotid gland. Most of these tumors could rise in all types of salivary glands, which we already counted. Well, adenocarcinoma is not quite general as a structure, but yes, sometimes in the parotid gland, we can expect adenocarcinoma to rise. Adenoma and adenocarcinoma in general, basal cell adenoma yes as a benign one it's a rare condition yes mucoepidermoid carcinoma ductal carcinoma yeah in some rare conditions adenoid cystic adenoma adenoid cystic carcinoma also vartin tumor another one yes very well me we're thinking the same way so all of these are types of malignancies and benign lesions which we can see in the salivary gland so that if you're asked on the exam for other types of benign and malignant tumors of the protein gland you would be able to mention these take a look at the classification which the professor gave you on the lecture and don't be too detailed okay are there any questions about this type of tumor 